My name is Reggie Koch. I'm an attorney here in Little Rock. I'm a former student at this law school. And uh, I'm always happy to come back here and talk to eager young minds, um, especially when they have uh, the inclination to come here and listen to what can be a boring topic, immigration. If, if you're here, then I assume you uh, maybe have some inclination to try to, to help people. That's what I, that's what I want to believe, and, and to try to help the people suffering. Because um, Mr. Anderson, and, and I'm happy, I, I actually got this information that it was, it was a debate, and, and they said, you know, let us send you some information about your opponent. And when, when I showed up here and we were visiting, Come to find out, we're largely on the same side of, of this issue. Mr. Anderson agrees that we need some immigration uh, reforms. And so we were kind of talking here, uh, not as uh, people on the opposite sides of an issue, but really kind of on the same side of the issue. But let me, let me try to take what Mr. Anderson said and, and make it and, and sort of humanize it for you. I practice here in the last 10 years, I practice here in Little Rock. I do not a lot of immigration law exactly. I speak fluent Spanish, so I represent uh, probably 70% of my class are Hispanic. And the representation is a broad, you know, criminal defense and employment law and uh, some immigration, like if they're actually being deported. Sometimes I'll, I'll try to stop that process. And I've done some of these deferred actions that, that uh, Mr. Anderson spoke about. But what I really have is a peek inside this culture this culture of second-class citizens that we've created to where people come into my office and say, my name is whatever, and here's what happened to me. And let me tell you, if you sit in office every day and people come in and tell you the stories that they tell me and you still want to round these people up and deport them, then I am ashamed of you as an American citizen. And I'll tell anybody that. Now, I understand we have to have policies. And understand it's not an easy issue. I often hear people stand up and talk about, one time I was in Hot Springs and I was riding my bike early. Well, believe it or not, I used to be thinner and I used to ride a bike. And uh, I was at a place and I heard this guy going off on immigration. He says, just need to send them all a letter, say you've got 30 days to get out. If you don't, just round them up and ship them out. It's easy. Yeah, it's real easy. Let's just think about the logistics of that for just a minute. Have you ever had, who here knows what Woodstock was? Anybody heard of Woodstock? A bunch of people, like tens of thousands of people get together in a field and they're going to listen to music. And they figured out very quickly, they didn't have water to drink, they didn't have any place to go to the bathroom, and it was a big, nasty, crappy, no water to drink mess. You know, it was just... There were a lot of problems. Well, imagine rounding up, after a 30-day notice, 11 or 12 million people and putting them where? Somewhere, till you can bus them all or fly them all back to their country. And where are they going to sleep and use the bathroom and all that? And some of them will... It's not like all of them will say, yeah, I'm illegal, you got me. Some of them will say, no, I have a right here. I've been here. I have all these possibilities. Well, you can't have, like, the agent that picked them up and put handcuffs on them. But by the way, we're going to have to increase from 20,000 maybe to 100,000, you know, like overnight. And so, so who's going to decide whether their case, their, their, what they're saying has any merit? You've got to have them in front of a judge. Well, the judge can't see them all. Today, so what are you going to do? And when you begin analyzing that out, and that's what law students are good at, and that's why I like to talk to law students is they're good at analyzing. When you begin analyzing that out, and you think about picking up Maria and her five screaming children, and, and what are you going to do with them tonight while you get this deportation progress, uh, process going? And it wasn't so many years ago that we had a, a, an immigration raid down in Arkadelphia and they went to the place of business and they rounded all these people up, took their handcuffs, and, and then that night there was like all of these kids left at school and left in daycares and like, what the hell are we going to do with this, you know? It's a problem. It is not easy and it is not humane to think that we're going to deport all these people. Not going to happen. I'm on the record today telling you it's not going to happen. 
You have two groups of people to worry about. The people who are already here and the people who may come here someday that we're afraid that if we let these people stay, then all the rest of them are going to want to come. Let me let you in a little secret that I found out when I traveled abroad. Not everybody wants to come here. We think that sometimes, but not everybody. Anyway, so with the people that are here, you ask yourself the question. It's a simple question. They're here. What do we do with them? And maybe there's more than two answers, but I think that you can pretty much boil it down to they stay somehow or they go somehow. Well, we could talk to them. Hey, why don't y'all go? And maybe they would all say, okay, I've been here for 20 years. All of my children were born here. They're, some of them are married here. I don't even know anybody in that country anymore. My whole family's here. My children don't even speak that language, but I'll go. Maybe that would happen, but I think that's on the time machine level. You know, I don't think so. They're going to stay. And, 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 and any time you hear these politicians or whoever, or, or the rednecks out at the, at the local bar, talking about round them up and get them out, right away you know you're, you're listening to someone who, for whatever reason, either because they're ignorant or because they're, they have some goal, they're not telling you the truth. They're not speaking in reality. Okay? They're not, these people aren't going to leave. I have a lady who contacted me. She wants to go home to Mexico because her mother's dying. She hasn't seen her mother. She came here at uh, about 17 or 18. Very brave young lady. Came here by herself at 17 or 18. And I could go through the whole stories about the attempted rapes and the different things that she went through through the desert and, and horrified you quite a bit. But I'll just pass that. She's been here. She got here and at uh, age 20 two or 21, I, I don't know. No, it must have been younger than because she has a, a boy that's uh, like 16 or so. So, ever how that works out, she started having children and has uh, four of them, all born here, never been to Mexico. They, I guess they know it's kind of south, maybe, but that's about all they know about Mexico. It's that, what, whatever, the south is, okay? It's that way. I'm not totally in Huh? That way? Okay. This way? No, that's not south. No, north that way. Anyway, <laughs> this is turning into a debate about which way is north and south. I knew this was going to be a debate. So, um, they don't know anything about Mexico. And, I, you know, you, you young ladies here, when you were 14 and 15 years old and you had your, cr your boyfriend crush and at school and this, that, and the other... And, you know, you, you, you barely even speak the language that your mom and them speak. You kind of know what they're saying when they're talking to you because they, you've grown up around it. But you've never studied Spanish or whatever language. Try to imagine me coming up to you and showing you a badge and saying, you're coming with me, sweetheart, and putting you on a bus and dropping you in Tijuana and saying, welcome home, honey. Good luck to you. If you want to do that, I'm ashamed of you as, of, of you as an American. Because that's not what America's about, I don't think. Um, I hate it when people stand up and talk about stuff and, and just quote you statistics and stuff. Mr. Anderson did a good job of showing us some history. That's valuable. But often I hear people saying, some study showed that uh, uh, they, um, immigrants hurt our economy and they cost us $25 gazillion a year or whatever. That's worthless. I, could, I have my views, and I can go out and I can find studies, so-called studies, that support what I say. That say that I can find some that say immigrants are great for our economy. They, they, they increase our tax base. They increase our uh, low-wage labor force so that we don't have to export all of our labor to, to India. I can find something that says anything I want. But I didn't do those studies. All I am to do is asking you to trust me that somebody else did a good job on that study. It's worthless. I believe that immigrants do help our economy. I believe that if you like eating at your local Mexican restaurant, and I do, 
I'm an expert right here. I'm an expert. I think that if you like it and, and you, if you if somehow you're able to have it all gone tomorrow or 30 days from tomorrow, you'd pay three times as much money for worse food and worse service. I think they make our country better. But I'm not going to stand up here and quote a bunch of statistics and, 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 and you know, try to make that point to you. I have actually a, a, a relative, kind of a distant relative, a, a distant relative of mine married an illegal Mexican woman who uh, had a, a baby. She came across the, the, the river with a baby, baby, like weeks old. This, this baby is now a teenage girl, about 16. Doesn't speak very good Spanish. She can communicate with mom okay, but that's about it. And she's a sweet little girl, goes to school here in Little Rock, and she's never been to Mexico that she remembers. And the thought that she is illegal and that she may have to be removed from here and dropped in Mexico someday horrifies her because so many people are out there screaming that that's by God what will happen. President Obama took executive action. Is it legal for him to do that or not? I don't know. There are, clearly there are good legal arguments on both sides. Clearly there are because a Texas judge, as Mr. Anders explained to you, issued an injunction stopping President Obama's uh, plan. Okay, Clearly, I am not the legal expert to determine that. But I really, I don't want to say I don't care. I'm going to stop just this much short of saying I don't care. Okay, Somebody's got to do something. And I support the president's actions. Because it isn't about, this whole thing isn't about what is legal or what is not legal. I mean, I could make a few points for you. I could point out that it is not a criminal offense to be here illegally. It's not. These are civil matters. You see them get it picked up and they get put in handcuffs, but they're not being arrested for a criminal violation usually. Some of them committed a criminal violation when they came across in what's called an entry without inspection. That is, um, if, you, if, you, if any of you have taken criminal law, yeah, it's about like a Class B misdemeanor. A couple hundred dollar fine, possibility of a few weeks in jail or something. They committed that when, it came, when they came across maybe 12 or 15 years ago. But it's not a continuing offense. And there's a long definition of continuing offense. It's not. Usually the statute of limitations, or sometimes, the statute of limitations on that has long since expired. And their presence here is not in itself a crime. It is a civil violation. And guess what? Many of them didn't commit a crime at all. They came here on a valid visa and simply overstayed it. They're not criminals, okay? Some become criminals because they use someone else's name or use a fake social security number or something and they sort of become criminals. I hate to express it that way, but um, I feel like they're forced to. But I, anyway, I could make some arguments but about the law, but really... What is our law supposed to be except something that enforces our public policy and what is justice? It enforces what justice is. And deporting these people is not justice. I'm sorry. You can't put that round peg in that square hole. Deporting these people is not justice. So I hope that our government is going to take some action if not Congress, then a president, or whatever. As an attorney, I guess I should say that I do care about the legality or the, you know, how they do it. But as the person who sits and listens to these people that come into my office every day, I really don't give a shit. I want them to do it. Okay? I'm ready for some action here. I made some notes here, but I always make these notes and never look at them. Um... We're creating another group of second-class citizens. If you go back about 50 years, 
you had African Americans in this country who could be told, you can't work here, you can't, a, a million things. And they didn't have a remedy. They couldn't complain about it, and they had no remedy. We're creating another one. I had a lady come in my office one time, and she said, I went and got a job at Holiday Inn. I don't mind saying the name of the place, let them sue. I went and got a job at Holiday Inn cleaning rooms. And my manager, this American manager that I have, he follows me into the rooms and he insists that I have sex with him. And, um, you know, I've had to fight with him and, and all this, that, and the other. And he says that if I don't, he's going to fire me. And I'm excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, ding, 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 ding. I'm fixing to make some money. Let's do it. I'm ready. I'm going to put a tape recorder on you. And I'm fixing to let Holiday in. Pay my house off, all right? Let's go. Let's do it. Okay, well, so wait a minute. Let me ask you a couple questions, she says. <clears throat> Is it possible that I could be deported? Is it possible? Well, I've got to be honest, right? You're here illegally. We're probably going to have to say that in a deposition somewhere. Is it possible? I don't think it's likely. I think I can. Oh, I don't think it's likely. But is it possible? Could happen. Is my husband going to have to find out? Well, I think there's a chance of that. Yeah, You're, we're going to have to do depositions, and there's going to be a lot of. There could be some news reaction. Yeah, I think maybe. So she started to cry. And she left. And I'm not really that upset that, that the holiday didn't pay my house. So, um, oh, and about the quotas, I heard this morning that the 65,000, it's already full this year, it's April 1st. So, you know, they're, they're, they, some people are trying. I know they're trying. I've heard Senator uh, McCain give some good speeches about this. I've heard Hillary Clinton's give some good speeches about this. But I don't see anything happen. We in this country love to throw a fit about people who don't want to work. Have you, how many times have you heard it? All the people on welfare, lazy asses, don't want to work. Now, I don't hear much about people that don't want to work. I hear about all these people coming in here and taking all of our jobs. They're working and we can't work because they're taking all of our jobs. I'm unimpressed with that argument. We are creating a group of people who, and, and, and I, you know, I'm going to give local law enforcement a, a, a plug here. We've had some local chiefs of police and, police and stuff come up, some of them come up and stat, say, call us. If you are a victim of crime, you call us. Because we're not going to ask you about your immigration status. You call us. Yeah, I've heard some, some of that stuff from Little Rock. Proud of it. I've heard some stuff from Saline County, just the opposite. Okay? Can't wait for me to find the right plaintiff in Sioux Saline County. I'm looking. Y'all hear something? Y'all call me. Have them call me. Because people, as a human rights issue, should be able to call the police and make a complaint if they're a victim of a crime. It's got to be, folks. I don't know how we're going to make it happen, but it's got to happen. So... The people who are here, I said we had two groups to worry about. The people that are here, we're not going to deport them. So let's figure out what we're going to do. And I don't have all the answers. I know it's tough. And I know that it might send a message to, to home to, to, for, for, for some more to come. But hey, we're already a country of immigrants, right? That's, that, that's, that's a separate problem. And it's always been, we're just repeating history here. We're just... We're right back when, when the people got off the boat at Ellis Island and, 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 and people went down through rocks at them. That's, that's where we are. It's just, it's just history again. And we're going to get through this. And the people, I suspect, that are in this room that, that, that are nodding their heads in agreement with me are going to be able to say, I was on the right side of the issue. The people in this room that, that, that are on the right side of the issue, aren't, they aren't going to be like the girl 
um, that got her picture taken when the Little Rock Nine went to, to uh, Central High and she was running behind one of the black girls screaming the N-word at her. That girl was on the news here a while back. She and the girl she was screaming at were sitting together and had made peace, you know, whatever. It was great, but I don't want to be her. But if you're on the right side of this now, you're not going to be that person. Because that's the way it's going to come out. It might take a while, and a lot of people that come into my office are going to suffer in the meantime. But, but you're on the right side of this issue if you believe that we're not going to deport these people and that we have to find a way to bring them out of the shadows. We have to find a way to bring them out of the shadows. I want my clients to have an identification card they can show a police officer. I want my clients to be able to drive legally. I have hundreds of people that drive to my office and drive to work every day and they don't have a driver's license because they can't get a driver's license. I understand the argument of, well, they're here illegally so they don't have the right to the, you know, this privilege we have at drive. I understand that, but it doesn't work. We've got to make it happen. They're here. We've established that they're here. We know that. I think we've established that they're going to stay. We cannot deport them. A lot of studies, and I don't like to quote studies, but a lot of studies and a lot of people that I know that are in the industry say our economy could not survive deporting them all. They're going to stay. So, they have to have a way to come out of the shadows, get driver's license, get identification cards, be able to work. Are we really going to complain about them wanting to work and say, no, you got to stay home. You, you can't have a job. We know we can't deport you. We've already established that we don't have enough funds, and it would be, but you can't work legally. So I encourage you, get your law degree, go out into the world, and make a difference one client at a time. And stand up for this. And when you see some ass standing up there talking about how we have to deport these people and refusing to take action, vote them out. Thank you for having me today. I guess it's it's like after one. I don't know if y'all have if you don't have any, and if y'all have questions, I have time to be around for a little while. And I'm, maybe Mr. Anderson. Yeah, does we too. can add, we can take some questions. Could be on politics or any aspect of the issue. I know y'all have both said that, um, that deportation is not really an option and there are valid I mean, good reasons for people to be here. How do you propose sort of amending that? Mr. Anderson. Well, I mean, I think you need to have it as a compromise. Mm -hmm. And I think where Republicans should be is in exchange for larger scale legalization, they really should have a large scale uh, work permit system where, where to prevent the problem from just happening again. Um, as we heard correctly, that yeah, other people are going to want to come here, so why not have them come legally and not just recreate the whole system? The Bracero program, the reason I talk about that is because it's kind of a natural social science experiment where you gave people a legal way of coming in and they took advantage of it. Uh, I'm sure every client you've had would love to be here legally. Absolutely. They would have loved to work legally rather than work illegally. And for anyone who's concerned about um, exploitation and that that affects a competing American worker, well, if they were here legally, they would be on a much more even playing field with a U.S. worker. So even on that argument, so I think that's really the only way to do it, is some type of legalization, like you saw in the Senate bill. Um, people could even make it tougher if they wanted to. I think that people who, who have been here a long time, they're not leaving, so if you extend it even more years, it's not going to matter to them probably. They'll still be willing to go through the process, but you also need to make the reforms so the problem just doesn't keep happening again. And ironically, the problem, the, the reforms are not what most Republicans have been pushing, which is just adding more border patrol and more enforcement, but it's really having this legal mechanism. And that's the kind of compromise that could prevent 
things from happening in the future, but also help solve the current situation of people. I agree with that, and, and I, I think that that brings up one of the common misperceptions that people have over the years. It took me a little while to clue in on this, but I began to understand that there are a lot of people out there that think that they can come legally, they just choose not to. Uh, I was at the Capitol one time at a rally, and I heard a woman speaking, and um, and I and she was speaking against immigration, uh, and not up on the podium, but just down in the crowd, you know. And I, I, I very quickly realized, no, she was doing an interview. The, the news was there, and they were asking her, you know, you're holding up a sign against immigration, and she's telling them she wasn't speaking. But I, I can't quickly even realize that this woman had this belief that. Here's the immigrant, and they're like, I want to go to the United States and work because I, I'm not working here. And that she had the option of like going down, getting in line, and spending a couple hours in line, and paying a $40 um, you know, entry fee, and she's like, screw that, I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to go across the river. You know, and, and it, you know, go, go home or, or, or do it right. If you want to come here, do it right. I even had a, a prosecutor one time in a case. I had a... Uh, I had a woman accuse a guy of rape. And the woman told her brother that the only reason she did it, because my client said, I didn't rape her. She said, well, I had to do this because there's this thing called the Violence Against Women's Act. And I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it can be, it can lead to some bad results where if a, if a immigrant woman is you know, was raped or a victim of violent crime, they can get their status, right? So this woman told her brother, and the brother was good enough to tell the guy, look, I know you didn't do this because she told me that she's doing this so she can get a VAWA petition. So I took him to court, and when it came down to the last minute, he didn't want to go to court. I had to get the police basically to get him there. But he got up on the stand and he told the truth. And and so I I, I did this at a bond hearing, for strategic reasons, because I wanted to get his testimony on the record in case he either got deported or left. And it worked. I got him on the record saying that, but the argument was over bond. And I said, Your Honor, I want you to see that we should have a low bond in this manner because I have a good possibility of winning the case because this guy has just testified to our defense. Well, our defense is we, I didn't do it, but the the, the reasoning behind it or the, or the motivation for her to be untruthful, this guy's just testified to it. And the prosecutor gets up and says, Your Honor, that's just not a believable story. I can't quote him, but it's like, Your Honor, that's just not a believable story. I'm sure there's other easier ways for her to become legal. And I stood and said, No, there's not. So, you know, even this attorney down there at the prosecutor's office, they, they, they really they listen to this stuff just sort of blandly on the news and say, yeah, those sorry people, they, you know, they just they ought to do it right. Go get in the line, pay your 40 bucks. It takes an, an extra day or two, but you'll be here. No, it takes an extra, if, if by some miracle you have some way to do it, it takes an extra six or eight years while your children are starving to death. I've been to Mexico. I studied and lived and worked in Mexico. I've been to where these people come from. Just ask yourself. I mean, this is a common sense thing. Just ask yourself. What would you, what would it take for you right now to leave everything you've got except what you can carry in that bag right there and to get on a train and go through the desert? I had one client who the person sitting beside her died of thirst in route. And go through all this horrible, and come here to a place where you don't speak the language, you don't know anybody, and you're going to get treated like crap. Has anybody thought about doing that? Has anybody in this room thought about leaving this country to go to a place like that, no. Because you've never had it that bad. Now, yeah, and, and so from a technical point of view, there is no year-round legal visa for lower-skill work. There is for high-skill, and that's what this H-1B visa is. But there's no equivalent on the lower end. The only equivalent, the only thing close, is there is an agricultural visa, but it's considered very bureaucratic, and three quarters or more of the people working in agriculture are working here illegally, so employers tend not to use it. And there's something called H2B, which is for seasonal non-agriculture, but it's more like crab picking in Maryland and that kind of thing. So, but for the example that you were giving your client who wants to work as a maid someplace, and it's a full year thing, 
there's no such visa. And that's really the crux of, of the illegal immigration problem that, that developed is because of the lack of a legal way for people to come in. I think that, I mean, I don't know, uh, you know, other than maybe people who were criminals in Mexico and, and know they wouldn't meet the criteria, very few of my clients wouldn't do it legally. I mean, they would pay the money, do whatever. And, you know, I know because every time somebody, you know, the deferred action or something comes up, they all call me and say, hey, when can we do this? You know, they're, they're, they're ready. They're ready to pay the money, do what it takes. But they can't until Congress takes action or something happens.